Well, I was planning on making a video on a non-DLC character for once, but then they just went ahead and surprised Ralph Banjo and Kazooie out of nowhere. So I guess we'll be looking at yet another DLC character. Hopefully I'll get another video in before Terry releases. Now, in my opinion, Banjo is probably the least DLC DLC character we have seen so far. He actually feels like a character that would be in the base game, and his hitboxes do kind of reflect that. But that's not to say that he doesn't have some rather interesting hitboxes. But what better way to explain than to simply show. Today's hitboxes were created by Struggleton. I would definitely suggest you go follow him on Twitter if you're interested in seeing more hitbox visuals being created in the future. But either way, let's get into it. Before we begin talking hitboxes, I want to quickly touch on Banjo and Kazooie's hurtboxes. Or rather, the black thereof. Unlike the other animal and his trusty bird, Kazooie does not have a hurtbox, with the exception of two cases, when using an up tilt and when doing a talent trot. In all other cases, Kazooie is completely untouchable, so for all intents and purposes, Banjo is pretty much a sword fighter. I can't believe they added yet another one. Either way, I just wanted to mention that, so let's get on with the hitboxes. As usual, most jabs aren't the most interesting things in the world. The first hit is a simple claw swipe in front of Banjo. It has three hitboxes, two of them have Sakura angles, and the farthest away has a 180 degree angle that drags you in. Now, as I have ranted on in the past, a lot of jabs used to have excess hitboxes that seemingly were there for no reason. Since then, I've actually found out that those were actually there to make sure that moves that drag people towards you did not happen on items. Yes, they made an entire additional hitbox on almost every character's jab just so you won't hit yourself in the face with a green shell. And that is only given if you somehow manage to jab a green shell without picking it up. It's such an extremely minute detail that I can't believe they actually bothered to do it. Especially seeing how there are so many other hitboxes in this game that just don't work or have pretty huge flaws. The reason I'm bringing this up is because Banjo does not actually have this hitbox, though he still launches green shells away. So I guess they either changed something about the items or finally figured out how to make hitboxes that do both without adding an entirely new one. Either way, I just want to explain that. The second hit of jab is almost completely identical to the first one while the third one is either a gentleman or a rapid jab. The gentleman is again much like some jabs we've seen in the past, kinda weird. Manjo has a hitbox on his arm, but in addition to that there are also these hitboxes that just kind of stay in front of him, which just looks kinda weird. His rapid jab is also kinda weird. It has four hitboxes, three of which look normal and is just about what you would expect, but for some reason there's also a fourth hitbox on Kazooie that just kind of sticks out to the side. I don't quite get why it's there, but sure. Why not? DLC character. Just throw some extra hitboxes here and there. He even has the sword fighter tradition of having a body hitbox, further supporting my theory that Banjo is secretly a sword character. The launcher has four fairly sized hitboxes, though this time it does make a bit more sense for Kazooie to have a hitbox on her beak. F tilt is probably about what you would expect. It has three different hitboxes with slightly decreasing sizes. The red hitbox is actually a sweet spot dealing 9% instead of the other two 7. Again, like I said earlier, Kazooie does not have a hurtbox during moves like these, making the move fairly disjointed. Granted, Banjo does hurtbox shift his arm quite a bit forward, making it a little less safe overall, but still a very good move. Down tilt is kind of a strange move. Banjo and Kazooie do a slide across the ground. The hitboxes are actually pretty huge, especially for a disjointed move. It has a lot of active frames, making the move pretty good for covering landings and such. The first part of the move has three different hitboxes. The one tipper hitbox is slightly more powerful, dealing a grand total of 1% more damage than the two others. From frame 18 and onwards, the move gets slightly less powerful, with all hitboxes dealing two less damage and the knockback being slightly lower. But all things considered, it's a pretty good move. Having at least one move with a lot of active frames is very beneficial for any character, even if the move itself is not super powerful. Next move is up tilt, which is one of the few moves where Kazooie's hurtbox is actually present. In this case, I do understand why they did it in this case. Banjo would be able to hurtbox shift over so many projectiles and other moves if they kept Kazooie intangible. As for the hitbox itself, it's very situational. There are three hitboxes, all of which only appear above Banjo, making it very difficult to land outside of anti-air scenarios. The move does hit slightly in front of Banjo, but the hitbox is so tall that it'll probably miss most characters. The sizes of the hitboxes are pretty average. They're not small, but for DLC character standards, I've seen better. It's yet another one of Banjo's tilt attacks that are just kind of a move. Like, none of them combo or really do anything that special, really. They're all just kind of moves. I mean, I don't really mind. 
But then again, this just brings back the case of Banjo being by far the least DLC-ish DLC character so far. Then there is Dash Tech, which is very simple. It only has one hitbox, and it is just about what you would expect in terms of size. The move deals 12%, but about halfway through the move it gets a little weaker, only dealing 8%. The hitbox is slightly offset, but aside from that I don't really have a lot to say about it. I guess I could address this in case anyone was wondering. When visualizing these hitboxes, the program gets kind of confused sometimes when trying to render Kazooie. It happens on quite a few moves which makes stuff like this happen. It's pretty funny but doesn't have any effect on the hitboxes. So while it does look kind of funny, don't focus too much on it. Before we move on to his specials, here is Banjo's grabs. As usual, grabs are very similar for most characters and Banjo is no exception. It's your standard non tether grab range and by that I mean it's just very mediocre. Eggfire is one of those moves where the projectiles can be visualized, but not while the animation is active. Neutral B has two different variations, the normal egg shot and the Briegel blaster. First up is normal shot version. Since the visual is not animated, here is the stationary hitbox. The hitbox decreases in size as the move goes on, starting out as about twice the size of the actual egg, before being just slightly larger. The same is true for the Briegel blast. The hitbox starts out about the same size, but gets smaller as the move goes on. So yeah, that's Neutral B. It's a little tricky to explain these without the animations, but I'm doing my best here. Just like with Neutral B, the grenade is only able to be visualized without the animation. The hitbox looks like this. It's yet again pretty standard as far as projectiles go. This one however stays the same size for the entire duration of the move. It's pretty much what you would expect hitbox wise, being just slightly larger than the grenade model. Wonder Wing is quite the move. Honestly, this move is just ridiculous. It's got around 35 active frames and is completely invincible. You can get grabbed out of it, but good luck with that unless you have a tether grab, because grab ranges in this game really suck. The hitbox is actually not super huge, but the active frames certainly do make up for that. The move can actually two frame, which is just great. The move starts out dealing 22% and packs quite the punch. After 12 frames, the move gets a little weaker, only dealing 16%, and has significantly reduced kill power. It seems like every DLC character has to have some sort of tool to invalidate sonar characters, whether it be counters or reflectors, bounce, or an approaching option that is straight up invincible. They certainly don't do sonars any favors, but small fast rushdown characters with solid kill power and stupidly fast frame data, now that's fine. A P does not have a hitbox while ascending. The launch platform that drops, however, does. Kind of like how Sonic's up E works. The platform hitbox looks like this. It's pretty big all things considered, however because of its fairly slow frame data and lack of knockback, you're probably not going to be gimping characters unless they have really high percent. You're probably not going to be gimping characters unless they are at a really high percent or have very bad recoveries. Next up is the Smash Dex. Up Smash has a lot of different hitboxes. The first part of the move has a hitbox that covers the ground on both sides. The hitbox launches up and towards Banjo, setting up into the second part of the move. The rest of the move consists of three multi-hit hitboxes. The only difference between them is the angles, which try to keep the opponent inside the multi-hits. Finally there is the launcher, which looks pretty similar to the previous part, but is slightly bigger. This move is pretty good overall, the multi-hits are actually very consistent and makes the move work well. Forward Smash is honestly not really that exciting. It's a very standard overhead hit towards the ground, you know, kinda like a sword fight. Okay, I'll stop. The hitbox is pretty good, and it is active during the downswing, which is pretty nice. The move does not have any sour spots, all the hitboxes deal the same damage and knockback. Aside from that, the move is very simple. No random extra hitboxes and that stuff, just a clean hitbox. Keeping with the theme of simple hitboxes, we have Down Smash, which is just one singular massive hitbox on the ground. It's very powerful for its size and lasts for a pretty long time as well, lasting a solid 5 frames. I really don't have a lot to say about this one, it's just a singular huge hitbox. It's nice to see that not all moves have to be moves with 6 different hitboxes in like 3 different parts. Finally, we'll be taking a look at his aerials. Up air is pretty interesting. The first part of the move is a bit of a scoop that tries to set up into the second part of the move. During the first 2 frames there are 3 hitboxes. The two hitboxes on the side drag you towards the center, while the middle one launches you up. The second part of the move is a pretty standard launcher hitbox. The hitbox on this move is actually pretty ridiculous, taking into account that the move is pretty much completely disjointed. The hitboxes here are very generous, just purely in terms of size is almost comparable to Cloud's Smash 4 up air. Granted Banjo is not as fast in the air as Cloud, neither does it last for as long in terms of active frames, but regardless it's a very good hitbox. Also, the fact that Banjo has two jumps certainly does help this hitbox. 
The only real bad thing about it is that the move is not particularly strong. It doesn't really deal a lot of damage, nor does it kill at any reasonable percent. But it's still a great move for anti airing and juggling. Neutral Air is your run-of-the-mill multi-hit Neutral Air. Now, I haven't really talked about multi-hit Nairs much before this, and if you've never seen a hitbox visual for a multi-hit Nair, you'll probably be a little surprised by how they look. A lot of them just use 4 hitboxes around the character and have those hitboxes activate and deactivate over and over again. It's pretty interesting. As for the hitboxes themselves, in this case there actually is 5 hitboxes. The yellow one on the top right is actually two hitboxes overlaid. One that hits ground opponents and one that hits aerial opponents with some different angles. I don't really know why they did this, seeing how all the other hitboxes have flags for both aerial and grounded opponents. Maybe it's for hitting people on platforms? It's the only thing I can think of. Either way, these hitboxes, just like many other multi-hits, try to drag you into the hitboxes coming later. Until the move finally ends in a launcher hit, which is about what you would expect. Next up is Sword Air, which is a pretty alright move. The move only has two hitboxes, and they are both identical. For the first three frames, the move deals 15 base damage, while during the last frame it only deals 12. The move is very strong, but similarly to a lot of other banjo aerials, it's fairly slow and pretty laggy. Back Air is certainly an interesting move. Its hitboxes are, uh, certainly, uh interesting. The first part of the move has five different hitboxes, and they're all just kind of jumbled together. I'm going to save you the details on this one. Some of them are aerial only, some of them are grounded only. The only one I feel is interesting to talk about is the taper hit, which only hits grounded opponents. It launches up in a weird way if you cancel the move, which could lead to some fun stuff, but aside from that, the rest of the hitboxes just link into the second part of the move. This move has four hitboxes, two for grounded and two for aerial. There's a bunch of different angles here, but they all serve the function of leading into the launcher hit coming after it. Again, there is this weird appendage hitbox that the Rapid Jab had. I don't really get why they put them here, it just seems very random. But I guess they don't do much harm. The final hit only has two hitboxes. It's a pretty standard launcher hit, nothing that special. These hitboxes are actually pretty great. These hitboxes are actually pretty great. They're actually quite a bit larger than you would expect. Banjo is slightly showing his DLC here. And for the last hitbox of the day, we have Down Air. The first part of the move has Banjo and Kazooie diving downwards. During the first few frames, the move spikes. I know, a Down Air that spikes, could you believe it? The later part of the move simply launches them away. The hitbox is nothing special, it's just a single hitbox and nothing else. If you hit the ground while using this move, it does have another hitbox. It's actually pretty huge, but it does have some serious lag afterwards. The hitbox is not super strong, but it's nice to have if you miss the first part of the move. And with that, we have covered all of Banjo's hitboxes. All things considered, these are by far the least crazy DLC hitboxes out of any DLC character I've covered so far. Most of them are pretty fair, and fit the moves they accompany. As usual, if there is a character you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments below and I'll consider it for next time. Oh, and also, I went ahead and I created a Discord server. It's still under construction, so there's not a lot going on there at the moment, but I think it can turn into something fun. So if you want to come and hang out and, I don't know, do stuff, post some memes, I guess, then there's a link in the description to that. Anyways, that's all I got for now, so until next time, thank you for watching.